Gave him Charlie as my darling one Saturday night. Huh? And he got the wrong idea, that one. The customer's got the wrong idea. She damn near emptied the place. There was leaving in droves. Oh, every night this week, look, drowning his sorrows. Well, it looks cheerful enough. Oh, be serious, Gilbert. Nay. Hey. hey, why don't you come back to my place and I'll play a tune for you? What about your wife, then? Oh, there's no such person. Not what I've heard. What? <laughs> Excuse me. Hello, Tom, love. All right. Look, I've got a friend here. I'd like no to... No way, Madge. I'm trying to make love to the barmaid, and it's hard work because <laughs> she's a popular girl. Oh, hey, look at that smile. You see that? Anybody's for the price of a pint. <laughs> what can I do for you, sir? Uh, port and lemon? Oh, thank yes, you. Uh, and a lemonade, yeah. please. I'll get it. Will you join us? Oh, no. No, he's had enough. Yeah. Sarah used to work here. You see, that's the trouble. He's hoping she'll turn up, wishing that was her now. That's what I think. Hey, over here, my lovely. Here. Hey, what are you? Let's go sit over here. Thank you. Well, then, uh, you're good health. And yours. Mm. Look at him. Do you know, he hardly ever used to touch the stuff. If he carries on like this, the garage is going to be bust by Christmas. And then where will I be? It's my own, isn't it? So what do you want me to do, Madge? Find her. Find her, Gilbert, and bring her back. Stop the rot. Yeah, well, it'll take a bit of doing. I don't even know what she looks like. Oh, here. Here. That's them together last summer. Margaret. Oh, well, I, I took it out of his room when I was tidying up for him. Well, it's rather a tall order. It's easier to find the monkey. Well, you're a copper, aren't you? Ex-copper. Alas. Just a minute, I'll put a light on, eh? That's my humble abode. Hey, you want a drink? I blooming need one. Let's open a window to start with. Oh, no, don't do that. We haven't got any eating. <laughs> Leave it. Hey, <laughs> what a sweat of my labour, that is. Here, you're not married. Whose are these? Yours? The woman who formerly lived here. What's she leaving behind for? Left in hurry, did she? Her clothes are still here. Hey, would you mind not nosing around? Some good stuff here. I wouldn't leave this behind. Unless I was going off with a millionaire, of course. What happened? It's none of your business, is it? Eh? I don't go around asking questions about your private life. Sorry? Mm. Hey, why don't you sit down? Where, might I ask? On the bed, I would imagine. You haven't made it. Oh. Is that to your satisfaction, madam? You're a rum one, I must say. I never expected this. Take your clothes off. 
I'll beg yours. Take your clothes off. What we're here for, isn't it? Oh, charming. Very gallant. I don't know what you think I am. Look, I'm not someone you just oh, pick up. Yes, a... you are. I should be very surprised if you're up to it, if you want the truth. I think you're a bit cracked. And I'm not surprised your woman departed. Don't blame her. I can't think what I'm doing here. You find me irresistible. <laughs> oh, yeah. Your whole body is quivering with excitement. <laughs> oh, yeah. What are you waiting for? Get out. What? Let your clothes on and get out of here. Go on! You bastard. Don't treat me like that. I don't go with any Tom, Dick and Harry. You were near the last of this. You won't show your face in that pub when I've finished. What are you doing? Going somewhere, are you, ducks? You admire them, didn't you, eh? Well, you can have them. Oh, don't be daft. I mean, what if she comes back for them? I don't want her accusing me she of stealing... You won't be coming back. Oh, done her in, have you? Have you? Look, I can't carry that. You're mad, you are. Look, I've told you I don't want no trouble. What? That's right, son. Don't forget the tyres. Nice and hard. 60. Right, Charles, sir. Only trying to help you, Tom. What by putting the law on me? He ain't the law, not any longer. I told you. He's ex policeman. He got dismissed. He's a good man. Now listen to me, Marge. Try and understand. I don't want her back. Ours was not a marriage like yours and Jack's. She goes her way and I go mine, see? And I don't need her. Thank you very much. Oh, hello. Pardon me, I'm not interrupting you. No, it's all right. I was going anyway. Yes, can I help you? You just might, Mr. Watkins. Er, uh, Pococks today. Ah, yeah. Paperwork. Bills. More bills. Dear me, I know. Noose round our neck, eh? Scrap merchant. That's right. Yes, I got a very busy... Now, day hang on, hang on, hang on, Mr. Watkins. Sit down a second, eh? Look, fact of the matter is, I was just looking round your yard. It's a bit off the beaten track for a garage, of course, but it's a nice spot. See, the fact of the matter is, I'm bursting at the seams of my place. I could use your yard as additional space. Well, I'm really not interested, no, no, Mr. Pohan. Oh, don't be hasty, Mr. Watkins. Look, I've lived round here all my life. There's not a lot that goes on that I don't clock. I know the trouble you're in. I mean, God blimey, you don't have to look outside. It looks like a scrapyard already. I'll give you 500 ecker for it. A cash. 500? That's worth a dumb sight more than that. No, it isn't. And even if it was, well, you're not exactly in a bargaining position, are you? I mean, from what I've heard. Good morning, Mr. Watkins. Uh, Gilbert Brackley, Maggie's friend. Oh, the copper. No, 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 ex-copper. Didn't she tell you? I'm having my lunch. Yes, yeah, so I detect. <laughs> my downfall, that stuff. 
Old story of the copper's lot, irregular hours, mind on the job. Wife well, skipped off with a colleague of mine right under my nose. 23 years married. Couldn't believe it. So I started on that. About to hit the bottom when Madge come along. Bless her soul, took me in hand. So when she asked me to do her a favour, I could hardly refuse, could I? She asked me to find your young lady. Give me this photo. Look, I told that bloody interfering woman I know where she is. Yes, with Lord Pearlie. Aye. Well, she isn't. What do you mean? What the hell are you talking about? Lord Pearlie left for France last Thursday with a well-known society widow by the name of Mrs. Harriet Bristow. It's in all the papers. She could be anywhere, then. I mean, I, I wouldn't know where to make a start. Well, I always have a method with missing persons, son. Start at the bottom and work up. All found drowned. Or done in. In the past fortnight. No, she's none of them. You ain't seen me, right? I've never been here. If you breathe a word, I'll knock your bleeding head off. Where's my blooming clothes? And my pots. What's she done with my pots? The trouble with Sarah is she could be with anybody, from a crown prince of Europe to all in wrestler. Or got a job as a barmaid. She used to work here, didn't she? Yeah, and sang. Yeah, she sang here. Yeah. And she was on the oars once, she said. Of course, she could have been lying. She was a bit prone to exaggeration. Yeah, well, it's a start anyway. Oh, hello, Tubby. Madge. Madge. What's up, love? Back at the garage. Yeah? I was just turned out sparking plugs on oak. Yeah, yeah. What's on. up, Tubby? Tom, we've had ever such a good idea. As it's Tubby's birthday, we thought we'd take him out tonight to a music hall. Why don't you come with us, eh? Cheer yourself up a bit. There's a good peel on at Barnaby's. By the Oh, 
Cheer up, son. You look like a copper off duty. Don't ask me. He didn't say he was working here, though. Gilbert found that out, my detective friend. Was that clever of him? He was only around a blooming corner. Yeah, I know you was, dear, but you could have been in John O'Groats for all he knew, couldn't you? Hurry up, Matilda, darling. You're on in a minute. Oh! Matilda? My stage name. I've got to go now. But you're going to see Tom after, ain't you? Is he out front? You see, is he made up the party? He, he don't know he's seen you, though. We kept that a secret. What do you mean? Didn't he spot me? Oh, well, it's marvellous, isn't it, for my career? Well, if he wants me, he knows where to find me, thanks to you, Tubby and Sherlock Holmes. Oh, but he won't recognise you, Sarah. He will in a minute. Oh. oh, would you think to take me up the Savoy for supper? Oh, <laughs> you'll be lucky, darling. A plate of Wilkes and a bottle of beer down at the Dog and Fox. More, dear? Oh, lovely. Don't mind if I do. Great. Excuse us. All right, my friend. On your way. Talking to me? Aye, that's right. Now, off you go, and nobody's going to get hurt. Oh, you. Yeah. Hey, listen, you better do as he says. Now, look here, pal. This one's with me, so you can... Ah! Oh. No! Stop! Help! Private detective, eh? I never thought you'd go that far. Where are my clothes? Quite safe. Where are mine? I gave them to the church mission for the deserving poor. Well, he wouldn't fit me, would he? You rotten pig. Some good stuff I had there. Yeah, that's what the vicar said. Well, you can go out tomorrow and buy me some more. I've already got what I'm stood up in. Oh, didn't your gentleman friend provide you then? Pearly. Hey. I never went with him, Tom. Yeah. Honest to God, I didn't. I just left that party because you was carrying on with that 
Lady Pomeroy, what's it? I, well, I was onto something there. Oh, you can say that again. Onto her. All right, well, what were you doing with Pearlie then? Fighting them off, mainly. Hmm. Well, what did you do when you walked out then? I got a ride. Geezer was going to Bristol, but I didn't fancy going all the way with him. So I stopped off at Bath. What do you do for money? Oh, well, I'll come back to London after a couple of days. Oh, did you? I'm not back here, though. No. I want to see if I could manage on my own for a bit. Could you? Well, I proved it, ain't I? Got myself a job, no help, room in Finsbury. Do you want a sandwich? No, thanks. I'll get a bit peckish after three performances. Hey, are you going to go back to that palace of entertainment? Well, that depends, doesn't it? You don't want to come back here, I take it? No. Tom, we should both get out of here. I, I missed you. It's, it's never you I'm running away from, but it's just this place. I can't stand it. It'll drive me nuts. I can't do anything else. It's all right for you, but I am stuck here. Drowning. I know. And I've been thinking while I was away. I've had this idea, see? It's, it's something I've seen at the theatre. You know Chang? Who? Chang, the great Chang, the, the magician that I introduced. Oh, he didn't stop that long, did he? Well, he's sick, you see. I've, I've seen him coughing blood. He won't go on much longer. And he's got this... this trick with a cabinet. It's the beginning of the second half, and it's... it's magic, Tom. If we could get our hands on it... What the hell are you talking about? Well, you could be the great Chang, and I could be Naomi, what he makes disappear. Oh, Tom, you'd slay him in a silk dressing gown, a pigtail. With your looks and your your strength and virability, you'd have a lady swooning in the aisles. You can't go around pinching acts like that. I mean, they guard those things with their lives, well, don't he's they? He's not going to need it where he's going, is he? We could buy it. Buy it? What with woman? Sell something. Sell the furniture. What, for a magic act? I mean, a bit of jiggery-pokery. It's not jiggery-pokery. It's gold. We could go anywhere with it. We could tour the continent, maybe even America. Oh, come on, Tom. You've always been interested in conjuring. The least you can do is to take a gander. Oh. Oh. to you in the King's English what Mr Chang and his partner is not capable of saying. That is that the illusion you are about to witness is unique and the only one of its kind in the world. <laughs> you observe that a carpet has been placed upon the stage underneath the cabinet to prevent the use of trapdoors. Two gents from the audience. Come on now, don't be shy. Come on. Oh, lovely. Thank you, sir. Would you stand over there, please? Oh, sorry, sir. Can I have the tall gent? Your turn next. All right. That's it. Lovely. Give me a big hand, ladies and gents. <laughs> now, gentlemen, would you please be so kind as to examine the interior of the cabinet? Have a good look now. Inside now, all the way around. Make sure there's no trap doors, no secret entrances. And if you're quite satisfied, would you please stand to one side until such time as Mr Chang may need you for his further assistance. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Chang Li Yen presents the greatest illusion of the century, the Cabinet of Mystery! <laughs> Two gents are gonna tie her in nice and tight. That's it. Come on, you're a big strong boy, aren't you? <laughs> See Naomi's feet.
sir. Who are you? Oh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, husband of one of your performers. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> good act, this one, isn't it, eh? Good? It's a miracle. Too good for this flea pit. Aye? Yeah. Old Chang's played to royalty all over Europe in his day. Pity to see an act like that wind up in a place like this. I, uh, expect you know how it's done, eh? Me? No idea, pal. We set it and we strike it. That's all I know. Hello, me darling. Yeah, I thought you were marvellous tonight. Morris, this is my husband, Thomas Watkins. Tom, this is Morris, the stage manager. Ah, <sighs> see. Husband of this performer, eh? Aye, that's right. Some performer. Hey, what does he mean by that? Oh, nothing. He's just been cheeky, that's all. What do you think? It's unbelievable. You know, he's, he's, he's right. It is too good for this place. Do you want to give it a try? How much do you say they got paid for this? Fifteen pound a week, Morris reckons. That's for twelve shows. Fifteen pounds a week? What, for two hours' work? Worth it. Well, let's go and talk to him, then. Here, yeah, you two. Off a stage, please. Oh, we was just leaving, Mr Barnaby. I was just showing a friend round. Yeah, well, there's no visitors allowed backstage between shows. Now, we've got to get the second house in. Go on, skid at them. Yeah, all right, Mr Barnaby. Come Disturb you, Mr. Chang, but my husband just wanted to say how much he admired your act, didn't you, love? Oh, yes, that was most impressive. And this is Naomi, wife and partner of Mr. Chang. Oh. Tom's most interested in the magical arts. In fact, he's he's a bit of a magician himself, isn't you? Oh, yeah, well, I've, I've produced the odd rabbit in my time. <coughs> that's a nasty cough you've got, Mr. Chang. A spoonful of Ipipiquan, that's what he needs. Chang, well. Chang, oh, tired. Many years say that. Always go on like good troop. You say you magician? Oh, well, yes, but not quite in your class, Mr. Chang. That, uh, that box trick of yours is, is quite good of its kind. You, you ought to be proud of that. He's not deaf, Tom. He's only Chinese. He done it for the Kaiser once, didn't he, Mr. Chang? Didn't he give you a medal or something? Here they are. Look at that. For old Willem himself. Oh, that's, that's, that's very nice. Fellow musicians, understand great honour to our profession. Oh, oh, quite. We magicians, very special people. Yes, that, uh, that box trick of yours must be worth a lot to you, Mr Chang. Chang, no sell trick. Never. Oh, oh, oh well, that's a shame. just a thought, you know. Next week, Chatham, Leeds. Many more date, all year, very busy. Well, let's hope he's got the strength for it. Chang have strength of ox. Now, excuse, please. I go for beer and sandwich. You not stay long. You tire him for second house. Yeah, all right, Naomi. Now's your chance. I, uh, I wonder if we might discuss a bit of business, Mr. Chang. Say, please. Thanks, Mr. Oh. Chang. I don't know why you're here tonight. Strange. Maybe destiny you come. You keep secret. Oh, yes. Chan tired, sick. Why, when I go on and on, Chan say retire this week. Enough! Wife not know this yet. Chan plays second house Saturday, then quit. Chan plays no more. You mean you're chucking it in forever, Mr. Chang? So, your, your act would be for sale then? Maybe. If we agree, price. You interest you name price. Well, um uh thirty pounds. You insult Chang. Young people play Chang box many years, make much money. What more than thirty pounds? Well, uh, how much then? Three. Three hundred? Oh, blimey. <laughs> Wife not know this yet until we're great price. 
Yeah, not a dicky bird, oh, promise. Oh, but 300, I mean, that is ridiculous. For secret, how to perform only illusion of kind of world, my friend. Yeah, we'll, we'll think about it, Mr Chang. Come on, Tom. We've... We've got one or two other disappearing acts to look at and all. Yeah, so we're, we're uh, just uh, shopping around comparing prices, you see. You let you know first thing tomorrow, all oh, right? Please. Now, Pocock offered 500 for the garage and Chang wants three for the act. Get at least 200 pounds. Aye, all debts and bills are in 175. We'll need enough, anyway. So that's 25 pounds. And if we sell all our bits and pieces down the market, that leaves another 10 for props and costumes. Aye. Here. Would you two mind telling me what you're talking about? Madge, we're starting with a clean slate. A new life, clearing out, we finally decided. That's right, we're going to join the great company of variety artists. Dan Lino, Mary Lloyd. And us. And you? That's right. What about me? Well, we were hoping that Gilbert might take you in hand. I mean, you've got expectations, haven't you? Yeah, this, this might give a bit of a push. Push? Aye, you know, to propose. Post what? Well, marriage, of course. What else? Marriage? Well, I can't ask that of him. He want me round his neck like a millstone. I wouldn't ask it of him. Well, you wouldn't have to, would you? I mean, he'll see the situation if he is half the man I think he is. What about Tubby? Can't marry him and all. Well, Tubby can always get a job as a mechanic. Tubby? Who'd have him? You're chucking us out like a couple of old armchairs. It's our lives at all, Madge. Might as well take us down the market with the rest of the stuff. Oh, come on, Madge. We ain't got no future, me and none of us. Not to take that one. Maybe we are. Thank you. Tom? Oh, uh, Sarah, this is uh, Mr. Paul. Hello, my dear. How are you? Mr. Nice Sutton. to see you. Come and sit down. I thought it would be nicer to meet here rather than a cramped office. You know what I mean? Would you like a drink? Oh, lovely. Gin, please. A gin. Uh, hello. Oh. Could we have a gin here, please? Oh, gin. all right, love. Now. Here, that's mine. I beg your pardon? That dress she's wearing, that's mine. Uh, Sarah, it... Hey, what you doing wearing that None dress? None of my concern, really, is it, eh? Uh, no. Who are you? Never mind who I am. Where did you get that from? 500 feet. Plus the it's from a gentleman. A present. Oh, what gentleman? Hear me, I've no right. I'll oh, gone back to him, have you? You mind your own business, oi! Church mission, eh, that slag? Uh, Sarah, would you mind not interrupting? We are, we are trained. Yes, I do mind, and I want all my clothes back from that Jezebel pronto. It's all right. They're rather big on me anyway, dear. You cow. Fourpence, please, love. Well, oh, yes, of course. Uh, <laughs> here we are. Uh, thank you. Can we uh, continue with this? Uh, now, yes. you, <laughs> Where are you going to live? I've written to my sister in Chesterfield. She'll take me in for the time being. It's a long way off. <laughs> There's trains, Gilbert. Well, I know, but... Well... Oh, you, you could always visit weekends, if you wanted to. All there, Mr Watkins? Hey. I don't want all my pots back, you! As full as when I left them by five o'clock this afternoon, if you would be so kind. Thank you very much, Mr Pocock. Yeah, call me Percy. Oh, right. <laughs> Listen, when will you be out? <laughs> oh, well, you couldn't, uh, give us a few days, can you? Oh, that's fair enough. Should we say, uh, by the 10th? The 10th, yes. The, uh, the 10th. What? Oh, cheers. Oh, evening. Hello, there. Back again? Ah, yes. Just popping in to see Matilda for a moment. It's the interval now, isn't it? Between houses. I go for Mr Chang, dear, and sandwich. Ten minutes. Right, I love, yeah. It's all there, Mr. Chang. So now I give my secret how you will construct box and attach ropes. How you will need also, of course, one pistol. Yeah, the props. You know all about them, Mr. Chang. And, and we will construct our box according to these measurements and specifications. They're, uh, they're quite clear, I imagine. In English, I hope. A child can do it once you know secret. Many people like no Chang's secret. Now you know. Very honoured. Now, if you would uh, just sign this, Mr Chang, which is an assignment of copyright and receipt of cash. 
Tonight, I tell wife we retire from variety after second house Saturday. We cancel date Chatham, and we will try and follow in your footsteps. You've got to fly now, Mr Chang. Uh, you take care of that cough, eh? And enjoy your retirement. You rehearse much first, not let down name of Chang. Mm. <gasps> your clothes. All the way from Finsbury. And give me room up. Here. Yeah. Have a look at this. Very good, Not Tom. Bad, is it? Do it again. Watch. Lovely. Have a look in the water of there's some more magic there. Oh, about time and right. all. Have you seen a box in the yard? Yeah, is it ready? Well, almost. Oh, Tom. Oh, hey, you shouldn't have seen that. Tubby's just painting the dragons on. I hope this works. Well, it's got to work, hasn't it? Have you arranged for the bed and the furniture to go to the market in the morning? Well, we're going to sleep next week, then, underneath the arches at Charing Cross. No. Oh. Theatrical digs in Chatham, if we get the book in. No, I'm sorry to bar Jim. Tubby says there's a van just come in for servicing and he wants to move that Chinese contraption of yawn. All right, Madge, I'll be down in a minute, thank you. Madge? Has Gilbert said anything yet? Why should he? Madge! And it's just been painted. Now, get it straight. Mr. Pocock. No, not that son, please. To the left. To the left. I used to work for Mr. Watkins. Oh. I have a job now. Look, is that my problem? Oh, it's crooked. Look, it's crooked. It's crooked! Oh, I'll miss this place, you know. Our first real home. Hey. Right here. Now then, don't forget to show your feet, will you? Hmm. Oh, it's dark in here. Now then. Revolving now. No, hang on, just a minute. I might as well kill myself, man. Blimey, me, what's going on up there? What the hell are you doing wrong? I got giddy and I couldn't get out of your blooming ropes. Well, it's simple enough. Just try it again, will you? Are you sure their instructions aren't in Chinese? Look, Madge. I've been having a long, hard think these last few days about the future. And I've been thinking, if I did start this inquiry business, yes. young Tubby could be my assistant. Couldn't pay him much, of course, but he's a good lad and well, I might solve his problem anyway. Well, I, I could go and finish packing. Do you want any help? Look, just stop arguing, will you? We'll get it right if we have to stay here and... Hey. Hey, Sarah. Hey, where the hell are you? Hey, how did you get over there? Oh, Sarah! Sarah! Gilbert's proposed! Oh, Madge, that's wonderful! Hey, oh, you mind you, we are here, Sarah, if you don't mean. He's going to start his inquiry agency, and, and I'm going to help him, and, and he's going to take Tubby on to do the legwork. Oh, well, it should solve a lot of crimes with Tubby doing the legwork. Well, listen, you two. He's got his eye on the premises already. Uh, such a good man. I'm so lucky, Sarah. He's gone off to get some wine so we can celebrate, so we can all have a drink together, oh, eh? Lovely. Here, can you give us a show? No. Oh, 
We're not ready yet. Oh, yes, we are. We're perfectly ready. But not in here. Let's do it downstairs in the yard, all the props and costumes. But Paul Cox's bringing his stuff in. Boy, well. Hello, boys. You're all up, Mr. Brackley. Yeah, right. Tom, that's courage. <laughs> Yeah, what's going on here? They're giving us their act, Mr. Pocock. Act? What act? I've got work to do. And I'm uh, I'm going to marry Mr. Brackley. You are? Mm. Well, congratulations. Uh, thank Why, you. Mr. Pocock? Under the circumstances, yes, I will. Thank you. Five minutes, boys. Ready, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, what you are about to witness has never been performed before in any scrapyard of Great Britain. <laughs> uh, nor has it ever been performed under such difficult circumstances. Uh, madam, no. your assistance, oh. if you please. Me? Oh. Oh, how'd you do? Mr. Pocock. Careful. <laughs> Blimey! How did you do that? <laughs> Would you please examine the cabinet for me? Yeah, nice bit of timber, this. Thank you very much indeed. As you will observe, there are no trap doors. Thank you very much indeed, sir and madam. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the great Chanley Watkins and Naomi. Sarah? Matilda! Matilda! Oh, do you mind? Sorry. Together we will show you the greatest magical feat of the century. The Cabinet of Mystery. Oh. Uh, Naomi, in the box, if you please. Would some young gentleman give me assistance, please? Tubby, thank you very much. Tubby, would you please tie the lady's hands as tightly as you wish? Oh, Tubby, your hands are cold. Now, Tubby, you did a very good job on his box. Oh, thank you, Mr. Watkins. I'm afraid one of the dragons is a bit wonky, don't you? Yeah. That's all right, Tubby. They should have been red, really, I suppose. Just watch that wine, Gilbert. Yeah. You're teetotal now, you know. Not today, I'm not. Thank you very much indeed, Tubby. Are you ready, Naomi? Yeah, lovely. Nothing, speaking personally. Oh. You know, you could have knocked me down with a feather. You ought to put this on stage, you know. Oh, well, that's exactly what we intend to do, Mr. Porker. We're going down to Chatham this evening to see the manager of the Empire. Yeah, he'd be short of an act this week, and with any luck, we could be on tomorrow night. <laughs> that's the third time he's dropped it. Where do they get them from? Stay here with the old chick vanishing out. Aye, we should do it. This is all they used to. Who is she then? Your granny? <laughs> <laughs> Call yourselves acrobats. Go on. Somersault off stage. Send on the manager. <laughs> We're not paying the money. <laughs> Give him a chance. He'll break his neck in a jiffy. Yeah, then we can all go home. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you? They're doing their best. Shut, Shut up. up. They're a rough lot, aren't they? Have to be good and make no mistake. Let's go see the manager now, eh? No, not now. Between houses. That's the best time. Oh, look at that poor old I'm going to push you forward. Fancy getting chucked around at her age. 
Hey, well, we're not going on that long, I promise you. We're getting out at the top. Here. Yeah. Isn't that the old Chang music? Yeah, it's probably some Chinese acrobats. You know, they all play the same kind of music. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the great pleasure now of introducing all the way from Peking, Hong Kong, and other parts of the mysterious Orient, and accompanied by his exotic partner, the one and only Chang Li Yen. <laughs> Finish. We'll go round after the act. Right. What the hell do you think you're playing at? Why are you coming without knock? Get out. Listen, too old and sick to carry on. Hey, giving up last set. Morris. That's right, darling. Morris and Naomi. I work with new partner now. Oh, so that's it. What are you done with the old man then? Slit his throat? Don't be melodramatic, darling. He's in a rest home for aging variety artists where he belongs. Well, what, what, what about our agreement? What agreement would that be? Well, I give him £300. Oh, really? What for? For the secret of the box. Well, you got what you paid for, but um, have you got the right to perform it? Yes. Yes, I have got his signature. But not mine. I, joint owner of Act. That's right. That agreement's not worth the paper it's written on. So clear off you two, eh? Oh, no, we can still do the act. We can still perform it. Well, the great Chang Li Yen and partner book solid from Lands into John O'Groats for the next nine months. Where are you going to perform it, eh? Come on, Tom. It's no use to got us over a barrel. Bloody amateurs. Ladies and gentlemen, what you are about to witness has never been performed in a public park before. The Great Cabinet of Mysteries, if you please. What we will attempt is to make the lady disappear completely. We tie her up as tight as we can so there's no possibility of her escaping. And you will now see the greatest feat in the history of magic. The ca you know, I think the act must be improving. We managed to make the audience disappear this time. What now, Tom? Well, we got no debts, have we? Got nowhere to sleep, neither. Oh, leave it. 